We're hand raising two Bali Mina chicks right now. They were hatched on the 3rd and the 5th of October. And while we hope that all mom and dads do a great job of caring for their kids, in this case, this pair needed a little bit of help. So these chicks have moved to our brooder room for hand rearing. These chicks are gonna go through several growth stages. They hatched bald and virtually helpless with their eyes closed, but their mouths wide open. These guys have been big eaters from day one. Um, and all that eating goes into a lot of growth. First goes into feather production and building up their size. Now they're almost at three weeks old. They're almost at adult weight. They're almost fully feathered and they're getting ready to fledge, which means they're going to be leaving the nest and branching out for the first time. All right, these kids have quite the daily routine. It starts very early in the morning. First thing we do is we come in, we wake them up in the morning and we get those kids on a scale. We need to know how big they are. Based on their weight, we can calculate how much food they're allowed to eat in a given day. We don't want them to grow too slowly and we don't want them to grow too quickly. We want them to grow just right. So everything that goes into them and everything that comes out of them is weighed and calculated. So once we determine the amount of food they're allowed to have at each feeding, we go ahead and set up that first feeding. Right now they're feeding at five times a day. They're eating at 8.30, 10.30, 12.30, 2.30, and 4.30. And if I happen to be here a little bit late that day, they might get a little snack at 5 or 6.30. We're taking a lot of precautions with these chicks to make sure that they grow up knowing that they're minas and not people. Every baby animal goes through a stage called imprinting, where they learn what species they are, how they identify. And when they don't do that correctly, that's called mal-imprinting. We want to make sure that these chicks imprint on Bali Minas, not on each other, and not on the keepers who are providing their care. That would be mal-imprinting. We're taking a lot of precautions. Those include doing things like covering our hands when we feed them so that they don't see that human form. Not only do we cover our hands, we cover the rest of us. And we do that by using a two-way mylar film on their brooder windows. That film acts like a mirror. It allows the chicks to see themselves while it allows us to see through and see them. And so they never see a person while they're being raised. And in fact, they never hear a person either. We're very careful. We don't talk in the brooder room. We're careful, we're quiet in the building so that they don't hear us through the doorways. There we, won't. we want them to see no people, hear no people, and be a bird. Riverbanks has had Bali Minas as long as Riverbanks has been here. Bali Minas started in our collection in 1973. Since that time, we've housed about 130 Bali Minas over the decades. During that time, 66 of those Bali Minas hatched here at Riverbanks. And according to the records, only two have ever been hand raised before. And that was in the 1980s and 1990s. So it's been more than 20 years since we've hand raised this species at Riverbanks and we're excited to do it. Bali Minas are part of a species survival plan or SSP. And in fact, Bali Minas were the first SSP for birds and Riverbanks were one of the first participants in that SSP. So it's very important that we're raising these chicks. Bali Minas are a critically endangered species and they've been, been, been impacted like many species by habitat loss, but they've also been very largely impacted by the illegal wildlife trade. Bali Minas are captured to be used as cage birds pet birds, and in singing competitions. In some parts of the world, having a bird in a cage in your home is a status symbol, and the rarer the bird, the higher the status. The better the singing of the bird, the higher the status. And this places Bali Minas in significant danger. As a result, there's less than 1,000 Bali Minas left in the world. To protect Bali Minas from wildlife trafficking, Riverbank Zoo supports the Silent Forest Campaign, this campaign raises awareness about wildlife trafficking of many species of songbirds throughout Southeastern Asia. And the Satch Krantz Conservation Fund supports the campaign. Specifically, we support a study of Bali Mina ecology through the Silent Forest Campaign.